If you're browsing for a new 1080p high refresh rate monitor, odds are you'll come across AOC's 24G2U. It's easily one of, if not the best, 1080p high refresh rate monitor you can buy, not only from a budget perspective, but also its outright performance. But more recently, if you're searching on places like Amazon, you might notice a 24 inch curved 165 hertz option with a very similar name. That would be this, the C24 GTU, and it has all of the same specs in the title. I mean, it's 1080p, it lists a one millisecond response time right in the title. This one offers 165 hertz instead of 144, and this one only costs one pound more. So no brainer, buy this one, right? Well, in short, the answer is no. This is a marked downgrade, not only from its outright performance, but even your actual gaming experience. See, there is one key stat that I haven't mentioned that is different between the two models beyond the curve and the refresh rate, and that is the panel type. See, the original 24 GTU is an IPS panel, but this one, it's a VA or vertical alignment panel. The significance of that is easy to miss, but trust me, it's a big deal. But why is it a big deal? Well, take a look at this. This is the Blurbusters UFO test for ghosting, and I'm showing, I'm starting with an ideal scenario, played the parts by an OLED panel from a razor blade laptop. As you can see, each of the UFOs are nice and crisp in their definition, they're quite easy to see, and there is no leading or trailing edge ghosting at all. Now, take a look at the results from the C24 GTU. Yeah, that's a lot of ghosting. What's that? Five, six, seven copies? Seven frames worth of that, that UFO moving across the screen and it's still being visible, that's showing that the panel is incredibly slow and is not reacting quick enough to have that UFO trail nicely across the screen without leaving a, well, trail in its wake. Now, normally you can help improve that by using a feature called overdrive. What that does is send a higher voltage to each pixel or subpixel than is required, but cuts it off back down to the required level just before the pixel reaches the required brightness or color. You can think of this like if you're pulling away from a red light, you can either apply the throttle very gently so that you never need to lift it off again, you just get to the speed limit and stay there, or you can mash the throttle, get to the speed limit as quick as you can, but lift off the throttle so that you're then not breaking that speed limit or going over it. The latter is essentially what overdrive is doing. It's making each of the pixels respond just a bit faster. Now, this monitor does have overdrive settings. It actually has, I think, three levels plus off, and here it is on the strongest or strong setting. That's not that much better. It does cut a couple of frames worth of ghosting, which don't get me wrong, is very needed on this monitor, but it's still nowhere near as crisp and as fast as it could or should be. But I'm here using a thousand FPS camera to show you this ghosting. Can you actually notice it in game? Well, I think my face in this clip probably will tell you all you need to know. It is very noticeable when you have any level of fast movement. If you're just slowly walking around a level, it's certainly not the end of the world. And even with faster movement, again, you can still play the game. It's still perfectly functional. However, if you're trying to hit what should be relatively easy shots, odds are you're gonna be looking at two to four copies of your enemy's head on screen at the same time, and your brain is gonna have to pick which one is the correct one to shoot at. That's not ideal, and meant that in my experience, in my playing time testing this, I was struggling to hit what should have been very easy shots, but because of slight motion, it was a bit more difficult. And on top of the response time, the input lag is markedly worse here too. Testing with my time sleuth, it reported just shy of five milliseconds of input lag at the top of the display. 
Now the way that the time sleuth measures the input lag is by pulsing a white square on uh, through HDMI and using a photodiode or an LDR to register that being displayed. Now you could argue that because the panel or the response time is relatively slow, what might be happening is the panel is still showing that image, but it's not getting bright enough because the pixels aren't responding quick enough to have the, the LDR or photodiode register that change. So I also tested it with total system or click to photon latency using NVIDIA's LDAT. That's a more real world scenario because I'm literally playing CSGO and just having LDAT fire 20 shots and record the input lag that it sees from the muzzle flash or specifically from the bullet hitting a metal sight. Now that reported an average of 44 milliseconds of total system latency, which again, to give you a comparison, uh, the original 24 GTU, now I should make it clear, I used a slightly different methodology for this, but that reported just 20 milliseconds of total system input lag compared to 44 on this. Even if you were to add 10 milliseconds to the original 24 GTU's time for accounting for various, well, methodology changes, that's still significantly faster than this new curved model. Now luckily this panel does seem to have better colors, covering over 100% of the sRGB spectrum, 84% of Adobe RGB, and 91% of DCI-P3, which is up from 83 on the original 24 GTU. Unfortunately, those slightly nicer colors don't make up for the fact that this is a gaming monitor, and the two key gaming stats of response time and input lag really aren't as good or really all that great. That's reflected in the gaming experience where, well, of course, it's still a functional monitor. It's still playing your games just fine. It's not the best experience. Because of the pretty severe amount of ghosting in slow or fast moving areas, even though this is a 165 hertz monitor, it honestly felt more like I was playing at 60 because of how slow it was to respond. I'm sure that in the right games it could be okay, but I honestly don't want to make excuses for this, knowing that you could buy the 24 GTU instead, and that's a much better experience. Now the rest of this monitor is fine. Its stand has all of the adjustment you would expect, including tilt, swivel, and height adjust, although the base is quite light, which means that when you go to swivel it, the base often moves, but it's not a big deal. The rear, or the, the styling-wise, looks pretty good. It has some nice red accents along the bottom, which I know aren't everyone's cup of tea, uh, and the same for the back as well. And there's no annoying RGB lighting here to be found, which I'm actually quite pleased about. And as for the I.O., it's reasonably fine. You have two HDMI ports, a display port, and a VGA, as well as a, I think, three or four port USB 3 hub with one uh, permanent charging port as well. So to recap, for your one pound extra, you get an arguably worse monitor, both from your gaming experience and from an outright stats and performance figures perspective, specifically with that input lag and response type. Sure, you technically get a 165 hertz monitor instead of a 144 hertz one, but because of that slow response time, you're not going to notice or see any benefit from that higher refresh rate. So please, if you're going to buy a new 1080p high refresh rate monitor, make sure that you buy the standard IPS 24 GTU and not this curved VA one. Now with that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the C24 GTU? Is this a monitor you would prefer over the, the standard one, or would you prefer the standard one instead? I think you know which one I would prefer. I mean, I literally just told you, so there you go. If you do want to check this out, or the standard 24 GTU, I'll leave links to both of them in the description down below if you check out. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store, where you can see pricing when and where you watch this, because of course it can and does vary. 
There are also a whole load of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, one of the easiest ways to get a GPU right now, or plenty of other designs as well. There's also the YouTube join button if you want to get access to our Money Men Discord chat and access to sponsor free videos as and when those come out and actually slightly early access too. Or you can support on Patreon instead if you prefer to just get access to our Money Men Discord chat. There is also a whole load of other links to places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there. There are VPN options, Hubble Bundle and Streamlabs OBS, so feel free to check it all out. And check out my original 24 GTU review on the end cards so you can see why I much highly recommend that one over this. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.